Well, another one bites the dust. Panasonic, one of the largest solar providers of the 2010s, just announced that it's exiting the solar and battery storage business. That's on top of over 100 solar company bankruptcies in the last two years alone. Does this mean lights out for solar? I'm gonna be answering that question in today's video and make sure that you watch till the end because I'm gonna be giving you my take on where I think the industry's going. The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're talking about Panasonic's recent announcement that it's exiting the solar panel and battery storage business. Now, Panasonic's history in solar goes way back, almost 40 years. So back in the 1980s, Sanyo was the first company to introduce solar cells based on heterojunction technology, or HDAT, which again is a combination of amorphous or thin film silicon with crystalline silicon to yield higher, more efficient solar cells. Now, Panasonic acquired Sanyo back in 2009. And for the first half of the 2010s, they were considered some of the best solar cells available. Uh, again, cells based on heterojunction technology typically offer higher efficiency, lower temperature coefficient, and lower degradation rate. Now, in the middle of the 2010s, around 2015 or so, we started seeing a high volume of really low cost, uh, in many cases, Chinese-made solar panels coming onto the market. And it was right around the middle of the 2010s that we saw that, that the fully installed cost for solar systems really, really took a nosedive. Uh, and that was exciting for the industry because solar at that time went from being sort of a, a niche or a novelty product to a product that pretty much had mass market appeal. And so as long as you got good direct sunlight to your house, based on these lower prices, a solar system could pretty much pay for itself in five to 10 years with this lower cost solar equipment. Now, in order to stay competitive, Panasonic decided back in 2022 to outsource all of its manufacturing. Although prior to that, they actually did make solar cells in the United States, then for a few years, they moved production over to Malaysia and Japan, but ultimately in 2022, they decided to outsource manufacturing of their solar panels altogether. Uh, and of course, now they're saying that they're exiting the solar panel and battery business altogether. Now that makes the third major player from the previous decade that has either exited the solar business uh, or gone bankrupt. Uh, of course, back in 2022, LG announced that it was quitting the solar panel business. And that's after they had already invested in US-based manufacturing. Uh, in fact, for those of you who've been following the channel long enough, you'll probably recall that back in 2021 and 2022, the LG Neon line of solar panels was one of the top rated solar panels at the time. And so they kind of abruptly just pulled out in 2022, citing financial concerns. And then of course, most recently, we had the bankruptcy of SunPower. Now, SunPower, prior to 2020, SunPower and Maxion were the same company. Uh, and they also had very high efficiency premium solar panels based on the Maxion solar cells. But they ended up restructuring the company back in 2020. They essentially spun off Maxion as the solar panel and solar cell manufacturing company and left SunPower basically as a, a sales installation and finance company that would actually do the, do the frontline installs for homeowners. Well, of course, SunPower went bankrupt last year, and they're out of business now. And that's after the company had been in business for nearly 40 years. But this heterojunction technology still lives on today. In fact, you'll find it in one of the solar panels we talk about frequently on this channel, which is the REC Alpha Pure RX. Just a quick word from our sponsor, Schneider Electric and the new Schneider Home. If you're a contractor or electrician considering which solar and energy management system to offer, then you need to take a look at the new Schneider Home. The Schneider Home provides an all-in-one solution for solar, storage, EV charging, and intelligent load control. The integrated design reduces the total number of components, allowing you to dramatically lower material and labor cost. Schneider Home uses equipment that contractors and electricians already know, like the Square D QO plug-on neutral load center. For over 100 years, Schneider has been helping factories and office buildings optimize energy, and now this technology is available for U.S. homes. 
Schneider Home is the perfect solution for new construction homes or those needing a main panel upgrade. So if you'd like to learn more information, you can go directly to the Schneider Home commercial website or click the link in the description below so you can sign up to be a certified installer right away. So why are so many solar companies going out of business? Well, one of the headwinds that we've been dealing with as an industry really for the past two years now is the loss of one for one net metering. Now, when we talk about one for one net metering, what we mean is that we basically have an equal two way relationship with the power company. During daylight hours, I can power my home on solar panels and I can send all my excess electricity back to the power company. Basically, I run my meter backwards, earning credits on my account so that during evening hours when the solar panels are no longer producing, I can just pull energy in using those credits I accrued during the daytime. Uh, and that system works great when you get a one for one credit. But what we're seeing now with many utilities, especially in California under the so-called NEM 3.0, net metering 3.0, now I may have to send the utility three, four, five, or six kilowatt hours during the daytime for every one that I get to pull back. So that really kills the return on investment for solar uh, unless you take on the additional expense of installing battery storage. Now, of course, the other thing we've been dealing with for the past couple of years is higher interest rates. And since most solar that's being installed right now is being financed either through a direct loan or through some sort of a lease or PPA, that means that as the cost of capital, as the cost of borrowing goes up, the, the monthly payment that a solar homeowner would have to pay goes up as well. And so if the solar is being sold as a, a monthly bill reduction, you know, we're going to reduce your electric bill from 300 a month to 250 a month solar payment. Well, the higher the interest rates go, the higher that solar payment ends up being, which means there's just not as much of a financial incentive for the homeowner to make the switch. And then, of course, we have the issue of higher dealer fees. So what, what are dealer fees? Dealer fees are fees that financial institutions charge to solar installers and solar installers have to pass those fees on in the form of a higher price. But oftentimes those fees are not disclosed and they could be pretty significant. So the homeowner might look at a solar proposal and think they're just getting a price for parts and labor, not realizing that that, that parts and labor price could be inflated by as much as 20%, 30%, or even 40% to cover the cost of the dealer fee that the financing company charges to the contractor. Also, on the topic of dealer fees, I think there's a question right now of whether dealer fees are going to be able to continue to exist the way that they currently do, where they're not typically disclosed as the cost of financing your solar system. Oftentimes, those dealer fees are buried in the installer's quote. Again, they might be presented to the homeowner as if it's just part of the parts and labor cost, but in reality, there are fees, significant fees, that financing companies charge to contractors to even be able to offer that financing. Uh, in fact, I was contacted by a gentleman down in Texas who represents over a thousand homeowners who are suing some of the solar finance companies because of the non-disclosure of dealer fees, as well as the non-performance of warranty service for contractors that have gone out of business. And then of course, with everything that's going on right now on the issue of tariffs, there's just a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace of how much solar panels are going to cost if I contract a project today, how much are solar panels going to cost two or three months from now when I have to buy them and have them delivered in order to fulfill on the contract. So I think all these factors together are contributing to a lot of financial uncertainty and a lot of resistance in the solar market. So where do I see things going from here? Well, the, the first thing is I think we're going back to a buyer-led market. Um, a lot of solar that's been sold over the past five to 10 years are people that are basically going out and maybe call it evangelizing homeowners on why they need solar. And so I'm, I'm sure you've heard of the sales bros and, and the door knocking teams where literally they'll go door to door to every home in, in a neighborhood and they'll present homeowners with options for lowering their electric bill by switching to solar power. You know, but oftentimes these sales teams, they're, they're using really high pressure tactics. And many times the homeowners don't even really understand what they're signing up for. You know, they think they're signing up to have their, their electric bill reduced, not realizing that they're taking out a loan, in many cases incurring significant fees on that loan, and then the finance company is going to be paying the contractor the proceeds of that loan to install solar, and then the homeowner is gonna be on the hook, in many cases 20, 25, 30 years, to pay that loan back. So I think we're, we're gonna see less of that and more people that are choosing to go solar 
because it's something that they legitimately understand and they legitimately want. You know, people like myself who, who want solar and battery storage because of the energy independent and the more self-sufficient lifestyle that it affords, I, I really don't need to have it sold to me. I just need to make sure that I'm getting the correct system design with the equi correct equipment that's going to meet my requirements. You know, and there are a lot more people like that out there. Uh, I do have to, to give it to Tesla for really helping bring this idea of uh, energy independence at a household level, having your own home solar and home battery, and really making that more of a, a mainstream palatable idea. Because the reality is the technology exists today that you can become energy independent at a household level using solar panels during the daytime, batteries at nighttime, uh, and, and really just using the power company as the, the energy provider of last resort only. So this has been a discussion of Panasonic's exit from the solar and battery storage business. Uh, folks, of course, if you're getting good value from these videos you see on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this come out, it'll come up on your recommendations and you can stay up to date with everything. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner and you're in the process of looking at different solar panel or battery storage options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote or maybe you already have one or two quotes and you need to get a comparison to make sure that you're getting the right equipment and the best deal, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below here, set up a call with a solar surge expert, uh, or just use the free online calculator tool to see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. But that does it for today's video. I thank you for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.